Hello and welcome to day three of the BFI Future Film Festival 2021. It is a fantastic festival. I've been involved for quite a few years now and hopefully even more of you will have been able to get involved this year because so many events are online. I'm Rihanna Dillon and I am very excited to be joined in conversation by a very cool new talent who you will recognise as having got a number of us through lockdown with her film Borat Subsequent Movie Film. Please welcome Maria Bacalva. Hello. Hello. Oh my God. You you pronounce my name proper the way that it is. I cannot yeah. believe it. It's the first, <laughs> and I think I'm even more excited to join you in this. I'm so pleased. Thank you. Did my research. Um, we will get on to your fantastic breakthrough role in a bit, but let's first start with the early years. I mean, you're still so incredibly young, but what sort of films were you watching when you were a child that you just kind of made you fall in love with movies? So the reality is that in 2013, I think that was the first year when I started acting, 2012, 2013. Uh, when I get to the National School for Performing Arts with acting, because I was there before that with flute and, and piano and singing, but never acting. Uh, that was the year when the Bulgarian Film Festival, Sofia Film Fest, had two Danish movies, both of them with Mats Mikkelsen. Uh, one of them was A Royal Affair, and the other one was The Hum. And I was like, okay, that's what I, I want to do to the rest of my life. I want to be like him. He is genius. So that's how I fall in love with probably more of a Scandinavian cinema and mm -hmm. sort of like watching more about who is um, Bergman and all of the other like pre-filmmakers like Tarkovsky, um, Antonioni, um, now we have Zviagintsev and I have to mention him too. And so mostly I was more, how to say it, in, in addicted to European cinema, not that much with American cinema, probably because in my mind was, okay, you will never get there. So try to focus around something that is near you, something in Europe. And at some point I was like, I should try to learn Danish because not a lot of people speak Danish. So if I know how to speak Danish, I might have my way to Zentropo, which is like also created by Lars von Trier and Peter Jehensen, I think. And Lars von Trier and Thomas Winterberg creating Dogma 95, which is the film movement that I was deadly obsessed with for eight years. <laughs> These were the films that actually was like a Bible for cinema for me. Incredible. What an amazing start. I mean, I was just watching Disney princess movies and <laughs> that's the reason why I'm not where you are now. Um, you mentioned that you were studying um, music, first of all. So tell me about that. What were your sort of initial kind of ideas about what you wanted to do? And then how easy was it to make that switch to acting? So um, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a rock star when I was young, six years old. And uh, to be singing, you had to be part of the National School for Performing Arts with an instrument. But all of the places for piano students were already taken and I had to find another instrument and nobody was playing flute. And I was like, okay, that's so beautiful. It's so silver and fine. And it's like, I'm gonna be so good. And because of that, actually still up until this day, this example, when I'm holding a glass of something, uh -huh. keep, it, your keep, yeah, which is ridiculous. And I, I was struggling with this, why I'm keeping my finger there. But because when you're playing, you're keeping this up and I just probably like a month ago realized why I have this in my hands so I started with music and I, I was I was playing flute for 12 years when and when I was eighth grade I decided that I need something more I want to start dig deep inside me and trying to escape which which are two completely different things because I do wanted to know myself, but at the same time, I wanted to escape from my reality and to try to be different people every single day. It was fun because you're, you're searching for new dreams, new people, new realities. And at the same time, yeah, probably you will have different problems, but it's not going to be yours. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, it was like a charming version of schizophrenia. Uh, so that's how it started. But I kept the flute and the singing with me until I graduated high school. And then when I get to 
the university, it was not possible because it was 24 seven from 8 a.m. up until 11 p.m. In, in the academy every single day, including Saturday and Sunday. And I was like, oh my God. that's the moment when we have to say bye for now <laughs> with the music. <laughs> Your life was basically like that guy in Whiplash. That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god! I mean, that's actually one of my favorite movies. Me I don't too. Know, oh. But it's for me, it's even more special than La La Land, which is also super beautiful, but with 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 flashes. Mm -hmm. So, what was your first on-screen role then, and what kind of films did you start your career in? I started with one independent movie called Transgression when I was in my first year in the National Academy, and it is really complicated part because she's been struggling with some ideas that she wants transgressive things to ruin the laws to break the rules and searching for something that is that hasn't been found i think if that's a way to see it and she's starting a relationship with somebody that she thinks is her father and that's how she knows mm -hmm. um and it was kind of crazy but i do like the movie and i do think it's it's important because it's triggering some important questions about when you're a teenager when you're just in this moment what is right what is wrong you have this how to say it, anger against the world and you want to be be special want to try something crazier just to feel that you you do something i don't know it's it's a weird time i, I cannot believe that i handle it in my personal life <laughs> Um, you also have just such incredible kind of comic timing and like I saw you on um, I've, like I've seen you on a few late night shows now but the one with James Corden and you know he's kind of like he's very well known for his comedy but you just blew him out of the water <laughs> with your comedy you're so so funny when did you realize that you have this talent and how do you like work on or hone those skills which obviously are so innate and natural for you? I, I, to be honest, I never thought that I can be funny. And probably because of that, all of my background for 12 years of acting, including theater, has been super dramatic from person with men mental illness to person with food disabilities to person with sexual relationship with her father to person with um, committing suicide or teenager pregnancy, things like that. And I was like, okay, I'm a real dramatic actress. Very but, I, but I think I'm just a weird, a little bit awkward in person. And I'm using too many words. My face is moving all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> even if I'm trying to be serious, I think I kind of funny in the real life, which I'm not sure that is a compliment. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but no, I'm joking, but I can be serious. Mm -hmm. but life is so boring when you're serious mm -hmm. so let's try to have fun we're here for such a short period of time for like 60 70 80 90 years max and what after that if you don't enjoy it in the moment what is the purpose of life it's a very so good rule to i'm live by. still searching for my comedic timing and my comedic performance uh but maybe because i've been working with session he is genius and he he did teach me how to keep being concentrated in some of the moments. And it's actually, playing a comedy is similar to playing something dramatic, mm -hmm. but just the script, the problems that the comedy has are smaller, but you as an actor have to feel them that they are the end of the world, which mm -hmm. makes comedy happening, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how aware were you of Sasha Baron Cohen's work? Did you grow up with it? Was it, you know, around? Did you, had you seen a lot of it? The more I'm searching about, the more I realize that it's been around, even in my country. Um, I wasn't familiar with the comedy again, maybe because I never told that I, I can be part of something funny. Mm -hmm. Things that I've been playing, what they've been cast me in. Uh, but I was familiar that Sasha, uh, Sasha made two great shows at the same year when we started with Borat. He made, um, the spy and he made it uh, who is American two completely different things one of them strongly political where he's playing like six characters I think and the other one was incredibly dramatic show where he is brilliant um, as the spy 
so I knew who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and I started searching in IMDb, Google, and I saw all of the credits for Borat, Bruno, uh, uh, the Ali G show, Ali G in the house, and The Dictator, and Brothers Grims Grimsby, all of his work. But I was like, hmm, the project is so confidential. If it was a sequel, probably they would have told me to check it. So that's why I was like, okay, let's not focus on this. Mm -hmm. Try to try to listen to your intuition. Try to be in the moment and see which direction he is gonna take you with. Mm -hmm. So I w I had no idea that is poor and that we are doing this thing because <laughs> it was a secret. <laughs> I just it must have been so surreal for you finding out, you know, like at such a late stage what the project actually was. But just tell me about that initial like introduction to you having to do an audition tape. That must have been surreal. <laughs> Uh, so the, the information about this audition was out for maybe a few days and most of the people in my academy were aware of this audition and everybody has sent their self tapes. I was like, no, that sounds sketchy. They asked mm. for us to record something with all of our details of our lives and probably fly us somewhere to shoot something without any idea of the script, who's going to star in the movie, what is the studio behind when this project is gonna be out. It was like a scam <laughs> at the beginning. Uh, now I realize that if we knew all of this information, probably the movie wouldn't be able to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the last day of my teaching in the university, where when you have like a huge ball prom with all of your classmates, all of your teachers, director, the directors, ex-students, everybody, that's the moment when they give you your diploma around 10 a.m. and you start celebrating, probably like 24 hours. And by celebrating, you mean drinking? Celebrating, drinking, dancing, singing, <laughs> everything. Because it's, it's the end. You're finally joining the real life and you're going to have like a career. You have your diploma. You officially are an actor. Not <laughs> just want to be an actor. You, you are graduated. <laughs> and you have this huge celebration that usually all of the people that are going through spend like 24 hours for real. Mm -hmm. But the next day I was lucky enough to be working on a project that it's really special to me because it's a super feminist project. Uh, it's called Women Do Cry. It hasn't been out yet, but I just heard from my producers and directors that they're finishing it because they had few scenes to shoot also. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had to be on location they had to take me from my home to a location around 7 a.m. So between 5 a.m. when I get home to 7 a.m., I had only two hours to pack my things, take a shower, and go out. And I was like, that's not enough time to fall asleep. Let's do something. And my mom was finally sleeping, and she's the most paranoid person in the entire world. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's record this. At least I'm going to meet Julian. Julian Kostov is another actor from Bulgaria who is living in London. And he's like an advocate for Bulgarian talents and Eastern European talents. And he shared this audition because Nancy Bishop asked him for his him help. And she's the, the casting director. So that's how I was like, okay, let's do this. And let's keep in touch with him because he's the friend of my friend. So I recorded it and I sent him as a joke without anything. And he sent it obviously to Nancy. And they then they called me like two hours later that they want to join on a chat on a video call. And I was like, I cannot because I was in the woods, because in that moment of the movie that I was shooting, my character is isolating herself in the wilds, literally, and I had no service, nothing, no Wi-Fi. So the next day I asked them to travel me to the nearest city and join the Zoom call. That was pre-Zoom, that was already, um, that was Skype <laughs> by the time. Yeah. Uh, and um, met them, but I was still like insecure. Is this your real thing? And then I went to England, met Nancy Bishop. She was brilliant, super convincing, super serious woman, something that I admire. <laughs> but I was like, maybe that's a secret, wep secret weapon. Maybe that's how they're tricking people for kidnapping and selling them, probably. I don't know. I'm coming from Eastern Europe. Who is gonna, who is gonna get somebody from Eastern Europe, somebody with an accent, to play a lead uh, lead part in a big budget Hollywood movie. It's mm -hmm. usually never happened. If there is a part for us, it's two, three lines here and there as a prostitute or a mob guy or a 
crazy science. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how it starts. I think I'm speaking too much. No, 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 no. It's all interesting. God, I just, it's just such a, just what an introduction as well to this incredible, insane journey that presumably you've been on ever since that <laughs> day. Um, just talking about the making of the film, how did you approach those scenes in Borat where you're working with the public and non-actors where, you know, you're having to improvise and presumably if you don't hit the right note with them, the scene doesn't work and you can't really redo it. Tell me about that. Uh, maybe that's that's the most important thing that you cannot have a second take mm. and we the actors are like oh i i did i missed something here can we can we do it again and especially now when we are not shooting on i don't know how to say it in english but now we're shooting in digital mm -hmm. so we can afford to shoot another take and another take and another take back in the day it couldn't be impossible but now yeah. we're a little bit spoiled uh but with this movie, it's been like, okay, you have only one shot. Do it perfectly. Because these people have to believe that you're real. Because it's also something like a so social experiment. You, mm -hmm. You're seeing people's true colors. You're seeing how somebody's going to react without knowing that this might be in the public space and everybody can see it. So why don't we treat each other better? Why don't we be nice and kind with, with each other? Why don't we love each other more? Mm -hmm. And you're just i don't know I, I was like i have to believe that my character exists in the real world just to make it happen that this should not exist just to show that that kind of treatment should not exist mm -hmm. the way that borat is treating his daughter and at the end he's gonna realize that he loves her so I don't know. I, we were rehearsing also a lot with the director, with Jason Wooliner. He actually showed the heart and the emotions of the movie because all of the scenes were written in English. But when we were doing the scenes, actually speaking in Hebrew with few Polish words here and there and speaking Bulgarian with few Romani sounds, words here and there. But the rehearsal part was really important because it was in English and Jason was in his power to, to, sh to say, Make, maybe that's the, the most important part. Maybe push here stronger mm -hmm. and that kind of things, I think. How do you rehearse scenes like that though? Like where you know that you're going to have to interact with members of the public. You can't, how, how do you rehearse that? I don't, it seems you're, insane. <laughs> you're rehearsing what is, it a, what is it between Bort and Tuta because they have their relationship relationships developed in the script uh, from the very beginning. How people are going to react, you never know. People are so unpredictable. You might think that they might start laughing because things that this is a joke or they might start yelling at you because they're mad at the things that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're saying things like, like, if your father was not here and you're like, <laughs> oh. okay, how should I react here? Uh, but yeah, but also the movie is showing some really beautiful human beings like, Judith, the Holocaust survivor, or Janice, the babysitter. And it's, it's, that's, that's the point, I think, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some incredibly moving pits, actually, in that. And, you know, that scene with Rudy Giuliani gets a lot of attention in the press, and it must have been incredibly nerve-wracking to film. How did you prepare mentally for that and then deal with the attention that it received afterwards? Uh, I was preparing myself... <laughs> with my friend Nicole uh, at my hotel room uh, up until probably 3, 4 a.m. And she was keep reading his biography to me while I was falling asleep. And she was like, and this, where he's born, Brooklyn. What about uh, his kids? This, well, who is him? What are the three best things that he did for New York? And I was like, keep learning and learning and learning. Be prepared to be the biggest fan uh, because you have to be convincing. You have to be convincing that you know these people. You have to know from which country you're coming. Mm -hmm. Sasha has been changing some of his countries because, as an example, I think the quarantine people knew about Kazakhstan, so he had to change completely his story or where he's coming from and learn it for a day or something. Uh, and you have to, you have to know uh, just the background of the things. You have to be well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and 
it 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 was nerve wracking for me, not that much because of the political effect, if effect because I'm not American. Mm -hmm. I will never, I will never be that much. How to say it? Familiar with American, poli American politics. Politics, yeah. But more about the human factor, and I cannot say that it's such a huge difference between having a scene with Janice or having a scene with Rudy. For me, they're just people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they're just human beings. And the more I'm thinking about, the more I'm realizing that it's not even about, I would say, the position that he is in, the, the age difference that is in. It's more about if I was a man, what if he been doing the same thing? What if he been interacting with the men journalist the same way? What if he been tucking his shirt, laying on the bed with a men journalist or drinking whiskey with a men journalist? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't know, I'm just curious about that more rather than um, <laughs> the, the political side. I, yeah. I prefer to be not involved with this because yeah. again, I'm not American. <laughs> yeah. And you're acting, you know, that was a scene for yeah. you. Yeah. And tell me about the kind of scale of the production. So something, you know, like this, which is presumably got, you know, a fairly big budget. It's a big kind of Hollywood film compared to something, some of your earlier films in Bulgaria. Yeah, uh, it's been different. Uh, we've been traveling a lot. We went to some really crazy, weird places. <laughs> uh, and I think actually that helped us to, be, to become a family, everybody from the PAs to the producers, to me and Sasha, it was like, how to say, the, the energy, the atmosphere was, was like family. We're there, to, we're in this together. Mm -hmm. And everybody's sacrificing his life probably and ready to catch COVID just to finish the movie because it's important and because we're putting our hearts there. So it was, it was really, really, how to say, really, really organized mm -hmm. and, all of the people that we've worked with are the best. Uh, they're genius in their jobs. So it's it's been great. Probably, I can I'm I don't know the differences between independent movies and a big budget movie. I'm I'm not at the side where the producers are. So for me, that kind of logistics are not really really familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a good person, if you're smart, if you're a hard worker, no matter is it a big budget movie or an independent film, and if you invest your heart in it, it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Just go clean there and and enjoy it. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know, it's your life, it's your work, it's something that you, you should be passionate about. So risk it and go <laughs> for it. Well, as you say, you know, COVID did have, you know, kind of stop production at one point. So did you have to make changes to the script? You know, like in a world of improv, did you have to sort of do any more as a result of the COVID? I think COVID actually helped the production a lot. No, I cannot say that. I, don't, <laughs> I was like, but the thing is that that was the time when they sat together, all of the writers, uh, the producers and told about how we can make keep working, how we can keep doing what we do and how we can finish this movie so to be able to release it by the date that was originally scheduled. So probably I think they changed some, some lines uh, because of COVID and COVID is part of the movie, which for me, it's also something important because again, we are living here for like eight years, mm. but the art is gonna be here forever. Mm -hmm. So why don't we tr try to capture the moment also and have it like as an example of what it used to be, because that that's that's history. It should be a history soon. I hope once we handle COVID. Yes. Uh, <laughs> distant, <but> distant history. <laughs> I really, really cannot wait for the moment when everybody's going to be safe, vaccinated, and life will start again. So. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's crazy. Around Christmas, somebody asked me what I wish. And I was like, everybody to get vaccinated and to start to live the life again. <laughs> so, but yeah, COVID, COVID probably adds something more to the movie. And they looked at the material that we already had. 
I haven't been part of the developing process because we worked with some incredibly talented writers. Uh, and we had a female voice also, Jenna Friedman and Erica Rivinoya, who probably more developed Tutus line because mm -hmm. they're women. Uh, so the, the script obviously changed. We have COVID <laughs> in the script. We <laughs> never catched COVID on set, which is something because of the incredible teamwork that we had mm -hmm. and the, uh, the people that we worked with for COVID safety. It does, does sound like you have you had an incredible team around you and you've described Sasha Barakon as your mentor and your teacher. So what was the best piece of advice he gave you that you will still remember and will use? Oh, what I use the most is actually because me as Maria, I am extremely nervous person. Every <laughs> single time when I'm about to do something, there is like, ah, I'm shaking, I'm going to die. <laughs> And he's like, use it, use this, use this. You can convert it and invest it in the scene because, because there's something more. If you're nervous about something, means that you are passionate about something. If you're passionate about something, you it's something important. So uh, nerves actually helps you because if mm. you're just, okay, whatever, let's do it. It's like, okay, why are we doing it? So Sasha made me realize that being nervous and being excited and being nerve wrack and, and even if situations are like crazy it's something that is important because obviously you're passionate about it and use it just use it how important do you think it is to have a mentor when you're beginning your career and do you you know was that sort of a really help is that do you think that Sasha Franco will continue to be a mentor even if you stop working together is he someone you can keep going to for advice I am gonna try my best to to keep going for advice with, uh, from Sasha because Sasha is really is one of the smartest, if it's not actually the smartest person that I've ever met in my entire life because you have no idea, but his brain is like every single moment. And there are new things coming out and for, from, and it's just inspiring to watch how someone that is that smart can, can actually try to to make this place that we're living in a better one mm. because Sasha is like a hero he really really is doing a revolution through his art because it's funny it's entertaining but at the same time he's targeting some really important questions and issues that are still happening while we're living in 2021 now mm -hmm. and it's crazy how as example there are some places in the world where women are treated this way from the father to the husband and completely subjugated by the patriarchy the patriarchy exists in 21st century and how women just in general should change themselves their bodies just to fit in the norm and to please the men's society which is crazy i mean it should not be about the gender it should not be about the religion it should not be about uh, the ethnic background it should not be about your sexual orientation we are all human we are all equal mm -hmm. and that's what i think Sasha is trying to, to prove with, with, through his art and to, to make this world a better place, kinder place. So I do want to keep in touch with him forever. And I do <laughs> him in anything. He is my mentor. And it is important to have a mentor because he is brilliant himself. Mm -hmm. But he's been a huge supporter for somebody that is a completely newcomer, somebody that has never faced his work because that's his game. He mm -hmm. developed this character probably the year when I was born. <laughs> I hope you told him that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think Allergy is around 2000 and they started developing around 1996-7 and I'm born 1996. <laughs> but uh, oh. there's, been, there's never been a moment when I felt alone in this and there's always been like keeping my hand and supporting me and believing in me that I can make it. I can make it. And I was scared. I mean, the bar was high. How I can stand right next to him and not ruin the movie. <laughs> he's, he's been advising me and, and really believed in me. So, Well, you have so much passion and fire in you. Would you consider mentoring an upcoming actor yourself in the future? <laughs> that, that's such a huge compliment. Uh, I, I would love to someday if I prove myself enough because... I cannot say that I 
um, I can see myself near nearest future established enough, proven enough that I I'm good as example, even close to how brilliant Sasha is. So if someday I I grow that much that I can be helpful to someone, that would be my biggest dream. To to I don't know to help somebody to support them to yeah tell them my advices and what I think and to be to, to just be there. Mm -hmm. Someday, if I'm, I don't know, it will be a dream. You've already like made history by becoming the first Bulgarian actor to get a Golden Globe nomination. Where were you when you heard about that? That must have been such a high. It, it is a history and it's something that I am really honored, humbled, thrilled that is happening because it's never happened before. And it's, it's a huge compliment and it's, beautiful for every little girl in Bulgaria and in Eastern Europe that things are possible where it it doesn't matter where you're coming from it should matter what you stand for and everything can can happen if you who said it I think Walt Disney said it every dream can come true if you have the courage to pursue it so and if I will add something if you have the right people to believe in you. But I was in LA with uh, my my agent and a really, really close friend, Kade Hudson. Uh, and uh, he wake me up around four because we were having a goodbye party with him and uh, my stylist and makeup artist uh, the, the previous night uh, because I had to leave the next day for the movie that I'm shooting now. And he woke me up around 4.35 and he was like, wake up, wake up, the gloves are here. We have to watch them. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. And because usually I am watching it, but it's never like a pressure, is something gonna happen? Is it possible to happen? And we were watching and I remember that I was literally for a second just small up and blackout, completely blackout. And maybe 20, 30 minutes later, I freaked out all of the emotions in one, like crying, screaming, laughing, smiling, jumping, everything, just everything. But we were together and I remember that because I had a video of another friend in Bulgaria that was on FaceTime with us and he recorded it and Kate, when they're pronouncing my name and Kate is like, yeah, well, I'm like, and it's like a blackout, full blackout. I, I had no idea what was happening and it's it's just the biggest honor that I've received. Well, congratulations. It is so well deserved. I, I do, you know, I, I imagine there's an element of it that must be perhaps bittersweet that you're not there in person. How is it for you having to experience all of this virtually, you know, no premieres or red carpets or award season lunches, etc.? Uh, I was thinking about, especially that I, I was dying to have premieres. Because I know from, because a lot of the people that worked on this movie had worked on the first one too. Mm -hmm. And some of them told me that when the first one has been released and when they've been in the cinema salons, people were laughing on the floor, like literally uh, laying on the floor by laughing. And I was like, oh, I want to see this. I want to see how we actually affect people. Do we make them laugh? Because after this hard year that we all experienced 2020, and when we were stuck in this four white walls all the time, everybody needs a little bit of love and something optimistic to, to remind us that at least we're alive and we are here together and we are gonna, we are gonna uh, make this go away soon, mm. hopefully. But um, I was like, I wanna see this movie because that kind of humor is also a little bit, how to say it, um, contagious because if you hear someone laughing on this on the scene you keep laughing itself yeah. and now when we released it I was like okay but thanks god Amazon was with us and they brought it to the world at the right time mm -hmm. uh, and that was probably what I missed about the red carpet of course I was like I'm gonna wear one of these beautiful dresses <laughs> really uh, but it is what it is 
some they'll come <laughs> you'll get there'll be so many other premieres in your future um how did your family and friends kind of react in bulgaria to your new stardom how did your paranoid mom react to this so my mom i think i mentioned that ex uh, actually in front of james Corden, uh, that my mom was actually really sad after she saw it for the first time and she was actually sad because she really empathized to the is the way this little girl with huge heart has been treated. She actually joined the movie itself. She was like, no, it's all not fair. <laughs> She's so cute. We should support her. And probably after two, three times when she watched, she was like, ha, 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 that's so funny. <laughs> Things like that. But they're happy. They're happy that um, I'm healthy, mm -hmm. that I never got sick, and that I was taken care of. And they love the movie now. Yeah. And my dad was like, oh, she's screaming at him like she's screaming at me. Oh, that's so real. <laughs> so uh, they're great. little insight there into your family background. <laughs> yeah. They're great and they're safe, responsible, because they're not 20 years old. Um, mm. But we will see when it's going to be the right time when I'm going to see them again, because it's been a long time. Mm, yeah, you must miss them so much. I do. Um, you signed last year with your agent, Creative Artist Agency. I, I know, you know, a lot of young filmmakers um, are kind of, kind of think that, you know, getting an agent is one step closer to kind of being able to do everything you want to do. So tell me about that process. What was that like for you and how has it helped? First of all, at the beginning, I had no idea what is an agency. Maybe that's the thing what me and Ju that Ju what Julian and I want to develop in Bulgaria because it's not a developed to have an agent. I had no idea what is to have an agent at the mm -hmm. beginning. I signed with uh, my other agent who is British, Londoner, uh, Tom Jago, like 10 days before, before the audition of Borat in person here in London. And I was like, okay, so what? He's like advising me or things like that. Had no idea what is it. Then like for a year of work, I was absolutely, amazed how brilliant he is and how much you actually need this person if you want to work abroad if you want to work on some foreign movies not bulgarians so when the movie went out i had few meetings with really amazing agencies but when i met the, the my team at caa they were so incredibly prepared they knew everything about my biography and the movie was already out so they've watched it and they made me a huge presentation where they see me what they can expect of me and i was like okay let's let's just work together and i can say proudly that i cannot feel them only as agents i do feel all of them as as a family because they are there all, all the time and they're discussing things with me at the same time we can have fun virtually uh also so they're, they're amazing it's just and i can i also have to say that i'm really really happy to be working right now and that's because of them because they connected me with with this project with Judd I I had the opportunity to record self tapes and to audition for this part and to to keep working because that's all we want mm -hmm. the actors to to just work or at least that's what I want yeah because I'm freaking out when I don't have work it's like a disaster <laughs> Um, I want to ask you about the Judd Apatow project in a minute, but just before we, you just mentioned about how, you know, in Bulgaria that you don't have agents necessarily or agencies. Oh. What has, what is, you know, what is it like for the kind of actor scene in Bulgaria since they've seen you in this film and seen the success that you've got? Is that something that sort of uplifted, you know, younger actors in Bulgaria to kind of want to follow your path already? I think probably that's one of the biggest gifts that I've ever received in my entire life. Uh, that all of these girls and boys hopes are bigger, that things are possible. And I, I'm, I think there is a thing that most of them should have in their mind. If she's able to do it, I can do it too. Mm. And that kind of confidence that we somehow have been missing because there is no, literally no representation for Eastern Europeans on, in the Western cinema. And now when we actually have example, like 
Tutus character, which is a multi-layered character, and it's not the villain in the movie, the bad guy, mm -hmm. somebody that is going to be... Mm. We, you have this character who is making a huge parallel from here to there, and she, she have the heart. So everybody is more, okay, so things are actually possible. We have the first step. Let's keep working. Let's go there. It is possible. Borders are open. Mm -hmm. Let's go there and work together. So it, it is inspiring. And I hope that it, it's just going to develop th that kind of relationship between, uh, between, the, between different parts of the world because we're all human. And I can, I can say that I have a feeling that the last few years, people are showing that they're thirsty, they're hungry for something different. And the diversity is actually what we all want. Mm -hmm. because there are so many different stories so many different accents so many different ideas from different parts of the world and if we all can capture these things together it's going to be beautiful it's mm -hmm. really going to be beautiful it's very very cool and i love that you are now going to be in the next judd apatow movie so what can you tell us about that the movie is gonna follow some story of another movie that a crew is gonna try to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there is a huge pandemic called COVID-19. And um, they're stuck in a bubble in a hotel. And it's funny. Again, life is, life is not that easy. Everyone has their own things that they're facing. So if we can make them a little bit mm -hmm. love, it's something sweet, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I just saw Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar and it is such a silly comedy and it was so what I needed in the middle of this lockdown. I just needed that silly laugh. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, it, we, need, we need comedy, we need dramatic things. I think it's important for our, our mental health. Mm -hmm. have have a balance. Around us. <laughs> because either way, you're just all alone here and you're not alone for <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> um you 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 know you mentioned earlier in the interview that you know danish cinema is such a big inspiration for you is that still like a dream of yours being involved in like a lars von trier susanna beer production uh, it is a huge dream and it's gonna be there forever um <laughs> it is uh I, I i am obsessed with danish cinema scandinavian mm -hmm. cinema too just in general, but specifically Danish cinema, because I mean, Thomas Vintenberg just released another round, which is probably one of the, the best movies in the last decade. The previous one was The Hump. And it's also <laughs> the last one. <laughs> uh, plus, Susanna Beer just released The Undoing, which yes. is, and she's also Danish. I mean, and all of them are working with some incredibly talented actors like Mats Mikkelsen or Trina Dierenholm, which is my idol. She she's just genius. Um, so it is a dream, mm -hmm. and we will see. If things are meant to be; they are going to happen. Do you have any advice for someone like yourself who needed to, who wanted to break into Hollywood, but perhaps you know they're not British or American? How would you advise that they go about breaking into Hollywood? Do not make my mistake and ne neglect shape my uh the english language because it is important it is important to speak proper english not about the accent the accents are something that we are who we are and it's something that we should be ashamed but learn proper english not like me uh and go and try and risk and yeah you might fall but what if you fly you never know mm -hmm. so risk as much as possible because life is so short and you have to enjoy every single moment and find an agent or open a spotlight account. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do it, you can find a way to do it. That's what I, what I think. I think I, I've been working really hard when I was young and I was more of an adult when I was young rather than now. But for sure, work on the language that you would like to work. So yeah. like the, the language, so say, you know, it's an English speaking film. I mean, don't speak like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I am trying to 
to start learning proper English, proper English because I do understand most of the things, but the way that I'm trying to express what I want to say, I'm using too many words, um, not the right way. So yeah. I think you're expressing yourself beautifully, to be honest. The language is important, plus risk, risk and go for it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, again, and there are so many agencies that you can find and people are open. And I think that they're going to become even more open for, 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 for diversity, for people from Macedonia, Romania, Bulgaria, Slovenia, Slovakia, um, Ukraine, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So and do you I want to try my best to bring the attention to all of these countries because I've been there. And even in my dream site, I, I've never told that it, it might happen. Mm -hmm. Just hasn't been happened. So I feel like I need to work with this mm -hmm. just possible. Something that I feel like I always struggle with and I think a lot of people do struggle with is self-promotion, you know, like really pushing yourself forward. Do you have any advice about aspiring young actors in terms of the best way to promote yourself? To be themselves. Mm -hmm. Everyone is so unique. The moment when you start to have idols, it's important, but they should be just a direction that you want to be like them, but they're who they are. Mm -hmm. So be yourself, you are unique. Nobody can be like you. Mm -hmm. Just embrace who you are. And it's always beautiful. It's always beautiful and inspiring to see, to see different people because we are all different. Mm -hmm. They might be identical twin to someone and they're going to be completely different people. Mm -hmm. If they can be connected mentally somehow, People feel that these things. I have uh, twins, friends, and they can actually sense themselves, which is beautiful, but they're completely different people. So yeah. embrace who you are and believe in yourself. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard. I don't believe in myself that much, but risk and try and believe in your dreams. Work hard, but believe in your dreams because mm -hmm. they probably can happen. <laughs> can you tell us anything about the untitled anthology series that you're writing and producing with Julian Kostov and how that came about? That came about because we were talking about uh again about the reality that we are living in and that is should be something that triggers our attention and things that we want to ask the world mm -hmm. and make an impact on the world also because we have examples like black mirrors which is one of our favorite shows uh like me and julian we were talking about different stories connected somehow with the same idea so we are still in the process thinking about also with insight management tom jago and we will see where we can go there because mm -hmm. if we start doing something that is going to be ours it should it should be really, really important for us. And we think that kind of theme is important. So we, I'm going to speak probably more when we get there rather than now. Because after you have something on paper, that's the time when you have to start thinking and how to say, and formulate it outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah formalize it yeah that makes sense I mean was that was writing something that you were always interested in or is that something that you found an interest in just through the stuff you've been doing recently and who you've met along the way uh I loved writing especially when I was in Bulgaria recently two days ago my best friend Mila um was like do you have your diary with you and I was like I actually haven't written anything in the last seven months she was like oh Wait, why what is happening with you but i've been always writing in bulgarian and i do have a few scripts in bulgarian uh, -huh. uh which are more more about bulgarian society because that's my background and that's where i'm familiar with mm -hmm. so i do love writing more of a, i don't know like poems and things like that or short stories writing a script something really 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 responsible thing so Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm there yet mm -hmm. that's why people are screenwriters or just writers I'm more of I'm more about having ideas and writing my the things that are in my life in in this moment or that moment but we can all develop them together <laughs> <laughs> well it does sound like you've met some amazing creatives 
along your journey so presumably they're people that you want to work with as well as the people you were talking about earlier like Susanna Beer etc yeah yeah um, I do think that kind of comedies, you know, like Borat, for example, people can be a bit snobby about them. But you, especially, have been winning so many awards for this role. Do you think that people's expectations of an award-winning film are changing? Um, I hope that people are, won't be uh, suspicious about seeing the movie. Yeah, it might be a little bit, I don't know. I, and Me, as a person, I will never think about things before seeing or experiencing them because you might have one idea and when you see it to have a completely different idea mm -hmm. so I don't know everybody can know their answers for themselves the thing is that Bort does have some some silliness some silly jokes but behind all of the jokes there are some really important messages because we are targeting how we should treat each other how mm -hmm equality should be the thing and showing the heart in in the movie is something that at the end of the day we need to be surrounded with good people we need love again um and that's that's probably the message the message that tuta learns from her babysitter the amazing janice jones and later today's telling the same message to her father that we are all human and we are all equals that the thing that i'm a woman right now and you're a man should not make any differences mm -hmm. and I, I do believe in that i do believe that if we all treat each other with love and respect the world will be a better place and i think that's why the movie is important and i can say that the movie is trying to unite people by showing them some really good examples and some Maybe not that good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's different when you see it on the screen. And for me, it was a life changing when I spent a few hours with Janice, maybe a full day with her. It was like six hours. And when I was keep repeating some crazy, ridiculous questions, sometimes saying something offensive and she was keep there. She was like supporting me and showing me, no, maybe that's not the thing that you want to, in that that you want to say that's not the thing that you want to do use your brain because don't listen to some people it should not matter love who you are not what somebody expect for you to be mm. and really really with kindness trying to teach me mm. and for me as maria was like okay wow that's something that i want to learn that's someone that i want to be like because she is like a true angel she's mm. such as pure soul and it's beautiful I think that's a really nice place to end it you can obviously see Borat's subsequent movie film on Amazon Prime I can't wait to see you next in a Thomas Vinterberg alongside Mads Mikkelsen at some point in the future hopefully written by you as well um, remember as well to everyone watching there is one full day of the festival left so do go and check out our program for lots more exciting events which are all free and available to watch worldwide thank you so much for joining us Maria Bakalva it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It hasn't been only one time. You did it again. I cannot <laughs> believe it. Thank you. It was my Thank pleasure. Thank you.